We will now consider the kernel trick. The first idea is the basis expansion. Consider the following data in the one-dimensional space. X is a vector of the data points and Y labels. This data is clearly not linearly separable. We can, however, use the basis expansion to embed the data in a higher dimensional feature space where it becomes linearly separable. Consider a function phi that maps a scalar to a vector with three elements as follows. If we transform each data point in this way, we will get the following data. Now, each data point has three features. Let's graph this data in this three-dimensional space. In this animation, we have the data points in this three-dimensional space, and we also have the separating hyperplane. The data that was not linearly separable in the one-dimensional space has now become linearly separable in the three-dimensional space. The kernel trick, however, lets us find the decision boundary in the higher dimensional feature space without explicitly transforming the data. We will now see how this works in the perceptron algorithm. Let's quickly remember the perceptron algorithm. We initialize the weight vector and an intercept term to zeros. And as long as any data point is misclassified, we update the trainable parameters. So for each data point, the parameters will be updated for some number of times. Let's introduce a vector alpha, which counts the number of times an update occurs for each data point. Using this vector, we can represent a vector of weights in a new way. Basically, the vector of weights is the sum of all the updates. When classifying a point x, we take the dot product between the vector of weights and a phi of input x. Using the alpha notation, this can be rewritten as follows. We can now move phi of x inside the parentheses, and this is where we will use the kernel trick. Inside the summation, we have the dot products between the phi of the data points and the phi of input x. Recall our function phi. Let's take the dot product between the phi of a and phi of b. We will end up with a basic algebraic formula that can be simplified. We can declare this as a separate function k that takes two inputs. What we now obtained is a polynomial kernel of degree 2. But there are many other kernels. Let's now rewrite the classification step with this kernel function instead. The importance here is that we no longer need to use the function phi, which expands the feature space nor we need to use the vector of weights explicitly. Let's quickly rewrite the whole perceptron algorithm using this trick. We initialize the variables to zeros, and as long as any data point is misclassified, we increment the corresponding element of alpha and update b.